Well, you sort of want him to be a great president because the country could use that now. I just don't think he has the capacity or the, the skill set to do that. And I think the first people that will realize that will be um, the people who supported him. I can't see what he's going to do with it, uh, for them, given the people he has surrounded himself with. His ratings are looking terrible. I mean, uh, can he get himself up again? Well, the country is really divided, and the only way he can become a successful president is by paying attention to the, the majority of people who voted for the other candidate. If he ignores them completely, he'll have a real rough time of it, and it will, he'll go down, he'll, his popularity will decline because he can't bring you know, steel and coal jobs back to the Rust Belt states. He just, they are, they're non-existent now. Mm -hmm. So he will, he's made a lot of promises, and he'll have trouble filling 50% of those, I suspect. One of the issues is that we thought the nearer the presidency he got, the quieter he'd become, but it's been quite the reverse. You don't know him that well. He, he is incapable of being quiet, I think. He, I, uh, um, I know a friend, taught, you know, if you, I've had dinner with him, and he's sort of entertaining in his own way. He never stops talking throughout dinner. There's nobody else gets a chance to to say anything, and I think it's going to be that kind of administration as well, where he is the, the front man for every major decision. Well, in, in spite of the friction between you, I mean, he never liked the fact that you talked about his small hands and all the rest of it. You have been to see him recently, and I know that talk was off the record, but how did you find it? He came up to Connie and asked to talk to a number of editors, and it was off the record, which I thought we shouldn't have done it, or just not done it altogether. But he was, he was very much in character, you know, we used to have an expression describing him at Spy Magazine in the 80s as he as a hustler on his best behavior. He um, he was uh, he tried very hard to win the room, and and not sure he succeeded. There is something pretty good in this for you, because after all, your magazine has put on figures ever since Trump got this close to the White House. Well, we reviewed a restaurant that's in the in Trump Tower. It's called the Trump Grill. I didn't even know it existed until recently and uh, we call it maybe the worst restaurant in America. And he tweeted that morning that Mag the Vanity Fair was in trouble, that the numbers, our numbers were off, and then I was a complete loser, and I was going to lose my job. And so we put this as a banner across our website, and we got 80,000 subscribers in 10 days, which is a hundredfold over what we normally get during that period. But one thing's for sure, a president cannot go on feuding with the media the way Trump has. Well, they're not taking away his cell phone and, or his Twitter account, and he's like a, he's like a child. He's going to continue doing it. He, you know, the, this past week, just attacking two of the, the most respected Americans you can find out there, Meryl Streep and uh, John Lewis, a, a, an icon, a living icon of the civil rights movement, that he would take after people like that. It means that, like, nobody is off limits. How long do you think he'll last? I mean, as, as president or as yeah. a person? <laughs> president. Um, I'd be surprised if it goes the full term, but I'm not good at predicting them when it comes to Donald Trump. But it's unlikely that a man would walk away from the presidency just because he's worried about his business. I think that um, I think they're going to have to be very careful on the legalities of being president of the United States. I think that uh, even his supporters will not accept him going too much beyond the bounds of uh, of what's already established. I think he's going to have to play, you know, close to the law.